This video tutorial is brought to you by the Fresno Mycology Society. In mycology, agar is used as a growing medium in the propagation of many fungal strains. The recipe we will be demonstrating today will consist of only three simple ingredients that can be easily sourced either online or in stores, as well as a few household items. The first thing we'll need are some DIY Petri dishes. These 4 ounce mason jars work perfectly and allow for easy long term storage. Then we will need distilled water. Next we will need light malt extract. Third and most importantly is the agar powder. Other materials you will need include a small scale, some sort of measuring cup, a large mixing jar, and a pressure cooker for the vital role of sterilization. To make half a liter of agar media, go ahead and weigh out 9 grams of agar powder. Agar is derived from certain species of algae where it is a primary polysaccharide building block that provides structural strength to cell walls. Once it is reconstituted in water, it forms a gelatinous consistency identical to jello. This gelatinous material provides a perfect substrate for steady mycelial growth. Once you have weighed out your agar, go ahead and pour it in your mixing jar. Next, we will weigh out 10 grams of light malt extract. This will serve as the primary nutrition for the fungal cultures. Then we will measure out 500 milliliters of distilled water. Now, it's time to stir it up. The malt extract is like thick molasses and may take a bit of patience to get completely dissolved. Now it's time to fire up the pressure cooker. The heat not only allows the agar to set properly, but in conjunction with the pressure, it will effectively sterilize your dishes in the solution. This is essential due to the fact that we are creating a perfect environment for mold and material contamination, and it only takes one of these spores to spoil the plate. Now we wrap the top of the mixing jar with foil to keep it from boiling over, and filling it with steam and water. Be sure not to screw on an airtight lid as this will keep the solution from being properly pressurized as well as keeping your jar from potentially imploding, which would be bad. This cooker automatically holds at 15 psi, which is the recommended pressure setting for sterilization. If your own cooker has an adjustable pressure release, adjust it accordingly. Before you place your culture jars, flip the inside lid so that the rubber seal is not contacting the jar and leave the screw ring loose to allow the inside surface of the jar to be equally pressurized just like the mixing jar. Bring your cooker slowly up to a steady boil. If you apply too much heat, your agar can boil over into the cooker. So keep your stove top as low as you can while maintaining an adequate boil to pressurize your cooker. After your cooker is up to the proper pressure, set a timer for 20 minutes. After this period, go ahead and turn off the heat and carefully move your cooker off of the hot surface. Allow it to cool down to a workable temperature while you prepare for the next step. If you have a glove box, go ahead and thoroughly sterilize the entire inside surface as well as the lid. We have a video tutorial to build this particular glove box and we'll leave a link in the description below. If you don't have a glove box, however, find a clean area in your house that can easily be sterilized, such as a kitchen countertop. You are going to want to be as clean as possible, so take a shower. And don a hairnet and particle mask if you have them, and be certain not to touch any surfaces that aren't totally sterile. Now that we have sterilized our glove box and our pressure cooker has cooled, we can begin the final steps. Go ahead and sanitize your hands with ISO as well as the pressure cooker handle you're about to grasp. Open up the cooker and quickly but gently get your materials out of the cooker and into the glove box and seal the lid shut.
we are going to want to remove the foil from the top of the agar jar and set it aside. Then, one by one, go ahead and open up your petri jars and pour a couple tablespoons of agar into each one. A quarter to a half inch deep is plenty. Before you screw the lids back on, make sure to flip the lid back again to the original side with the seal tightly screwed onto the lid. To store these for long periods of time, go ahead and refrigerate or leave in a cool dark corner. That's it for this video. Join us next time to learn how to inoculate your newly made petri dishes. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos, then put them down below. You can also follow us on Facebook and Flickr or on our website at fresnomycology.org. If you'd like to help us make more videos like this in the future, you can donate to the Fresno Mycology Society on Patreon. Thank you.